Thanks for stopping by to see what I'm up to today. Today we're going to talk about fossil fuel. No. Today we're going to talk about getting wires, getting power, getting antenna signal in from the outside of the vehicle to the inside. Now this video has been done many times, many different ways. You say, why are you doing that video again, Bill? Well, very often the older videos fall back on the YouTube algorithm and new people, newbies, beginners, people that want to just get into this, even people who've been into this for years but now want to try the mobile part of ham radio, want to know how to get your antenna wires, your signal, and your power wires from your battery, from the engine compartment to the cab. And this is just one way. There's always another way, but this is just one and way. This is just one way. First thing is first, I want to remind people of a couple things. Always, always use the proper gauge wire. Now, you're going to research that, but the bigger the wire, the better. Now, at some point, big wire becomes um, hard to handle, and it, maybe it's too much. But make sure you do your research and you have a wire that is capable of carrying the amperage that's available from the power source which is the battery which is a pretty big power source and it can provide lots of amps uh, a battery this size can weld something for a short period of time so it can definitely burn you and definitely give you an injury so just in case there's a fault a short circuit you want the amperage of the wire to be able to handle the situation along with that you want to make sure it's fused properly again research get the proper fuse there are lots of things to consider as you're uh, pursuing this endeavor of installing radio in your truck, how are you going to gather all the wires and make sure they stay out of the way? Is vehicle noise going to be a problem with the vehicle? I, for one, usually park the vehicle and turn it off so I don't worry about engine noise or noise from the vehicle charging system uh, affecting my radio. If you accidentally leave the radio on, will it drain your battery down to the point where you can't start it? I use a uh, DC handling unit. That's not a real word. That's just something that I made up. Uh, I use a West Mountain Radio power gate. And that keeps me from discharging my vehicle battery should I accidentally leave the radio on. What it does is it charges the another battery. I have a 30 amp bio anal battery that I use specifically for the radios. So the power goes from my vehicle battery to the West Mountain power gate, then from the power gate to my bioanal battery, and then from the bioanal battery to the radios. So here's the vehicle battery. Here's what I consider, you may not, a proper fuse. Now I'm running a uh, a wire that I think will handle the amperage. I have a couple of different accessories uh, besides the radio that goes to this, but I have the proper fuse connected directly to the battery within eight to 10 inches. There's also a ring terminator on each of the positive and negative terminals to directly to the battery. And then I have the wire from the fuse going down along the firewall to the point of entry. Now some people will tell you that you want to go through a grommet. Well, grommets are in different places. Here I'm using one that maybe other people wouldn't recommend, but I'm going to use a grommet that's under the vehicle as opposed to in the firewall. Now there are grommets, different vehicles have different ones for the wires the hoses to pass through from the engine compartment to the cabin of the truck. They're there guys. The engineers who build this truck and who design it are just as interested in getting things from the outside to the inside. So they are there. I today am using a grommet that's under the truck in the foot well. I have used them before in the door well just under the door. So whichever one you choose, for whatever reason, make sure the wires are gathered up and pulled out of the way so they don't catch on snags in the road. I've used, in this case, a Diamond K400 mount. This is where I mount my 
HF screwdriver antenna, the Diamond S3, SD330. And I route the wires according to practices other people have taught me, and I make sure those wires stay out of the and way. I get the wires grouped and positioned out of the way. Again, of the hinges, the high pressure uh, door lifter, and I'll go on to the other side. We'll take a look. Again, a Diamond 400 employed a different way with uh, a ham stick, but again, I've made sure the wires are clear of the truck and they run right down along the front of the firewall. So the 12 volt power going to the West Mountain unit is directly connected to the battery and it's connected with these install gears fuse holders. I've done something wrong here and I kind of pride myself on being in the ballpark and what I've done is I've connected these fuses without ferrules. So you say well what's the difference and when I was younger I man I'd whip one together real quick and twist the wire and wrap it around the screw. Well it chews up the wire. It doesn't provide as much surface contact and it's just generally not as neat an install. And you can see if you take a look at what that screw does to the wire. Now I think this one I put it in there lightly I think this one is savable because I didn't really wrench down on it because I knew I was going to do this. And I'm going to use a number six. I think this is six, ga six gauge wire. I'm going to use a number six ferrule. And there are a few loose pieces there, but I think this is going to do the trick. So I put the ferrule on, reach across the camera. Sorry, guys. Give it a squeeze, it's on there, and I think that's good enough. Then take the ferrule and put it into the fuse holder. Clamp down on that ferrule. Secure the fuse holder, replace the fuse cover, and now you're ready to begin running wires. That's about enough for this portion of how to run wires to and from for our mobile installation. Join me next time in this series and we'll start talking about how to run the wires through available access points. See you next time, guys.